O Lord, open thou our lips, and our mouth shall show forth thy praise. Good morning and welcome. This Remembrance Sunday, the restrictions currently placed on our way of life mean that it's impossible for us to hold our normal Remembrance Day parades. And so in this online service, we're going to make an act of remembrance for the fallen across all four of our parishes in this benefice. We're going to pray for the needs of the world. We're going to hear a reading from Padre Rebecca Cannon, who is currently based in Doha, and a sermon from Padre Matt Stevens of RAF Benson, which he has recorded in the Station Church in RAF Benson. As we gather, let us pray. O come, let us sing unto the Lord. Let us heartily rejoice in the strength of our salvation. Let us come before his presence with thanksgiving and show ourselves glad in him with psalms. For the Lord is a great God and a great King above all gods. In his hand are all the corners of the earth and the strength of the hills is his also. The sea is his and he made it and his hands prepared the dry land. O come, let us worship and fall down and kneel before the Lord our Maker. For he is the Lord our God and we are the people of his pasture and the sheep of his hand. God is our refuge and strength, a very present help in trouble. Words from the 46th Psalm. I lift up my eyes to the hills. From whence will my help come? My help comes from the Lord who made heaven and earth. From the 121st Psalm. Dear friends, we assemble in our homes today to worship Almighty God, whose purposes are good, whose power sustains the world he has made, who loves us 
though we have failed in his service, who gave Jesus Christ for the life of the world, who by his Holy Spirit leads us in his way. And so as we give thanks for his great works this morning, we remember all those who have lived and died in his service and in the service of others. We pray for all who suffer through war and are in need. We ask for God's help and his blessing that we may do his will and that the whole world may acknowledge him as Lord and King. But first, as we gather together to remember before him the fallen, we come to God in sorrow for our own sins and we seek his forgiveness. Let us pray. Most merciful God, Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, we confess that we have sinned in thought and word and deed. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbours as ourselves. In your mercy, forgive what we have been. Help us to amend what we are and direct what we shall be, that we may do justly, love mercy and walk humbly with you, our God. Amen. May Almighty God forgive you and free you from, his, from your sins and restore you in the image of his glory, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. So let us now, this Remembrance Sunday, remember before God all those who have died in war and all those who have died in the service of others. And let us commend them to God's fatherly goodness and to his safekeeping. From the parish of Benson during the First World War. Albert Batts, Charles Butcher, Ernest Brown, John Bridcut, Arthur Bridcut, Frederick Dixon, Frank Duffield, Frank Eustace, Cecil Gray, Harry Green, Jonas Green, Frederick Haley, Jesse Harmer, Henry Horting, E. Morris Hutchings. William Jones, Alfred Luca, James Luca, Arthur Mumford, Ernest Phillips, John Painter, Alfred Strudley, William Smith, William Wheeler, Charles Webb, Richard Wicello, John Winfield, John Weston, Harry Wigmore, Gilbert Young. From Turner's Court, Albert Bullen, Sam Bailey, Peter Chad, Herbert Cockerell, Frederick Curtis, Thomas Embury, Joseph Frost, Frederick Holt, Walter Harris, William Hastings, John Peters, Robert Sheldrake, Herbert Smith, Sidney Soper, John Wilde. In the Second World War, Alec Beale, Richard Chamberlain, Walter Chamberlain, Albert Victor Constable, Raymond Dance, Robert Dunlop Mackenzie, Thomas Heath, Kenneth Howes, Ernest A. Phillips, Ben Pick, Frank Salter, John Wood. From the Royal Air Force after the World Wars, Mark McGuire, Andrew Krauss, Christian Glover, John Coxon, Sarah Jane Mulverhill, Geraint Roberts, Alan Scott. From the parish of Ewelm during the First World War, Harry Jessop, John Awkward, William Long, Arthur Shepherd, Herbert Winfield, Adonijah Smith, Walter Mundy, Albert Cook, Thomas Orr, Charles Champion. 
James Orr, Alfred Cripps, Charles Aves, Harry Kent, Albert Mundy, Arthur Benning, Francis Keane, Thomas Busby, John Godden, William Lansley. In the Second World War, Harry Aves, George Kent, Grenville Hamden, Sidney May, Charles Walklin. From the parish of Brightwell Baldwin, in the First World War, George Gammon, Albert Selwood, William Aldridge, Percy Selwood, Swanley Gammon, Richard Selwood, Albert Johnson, and during the Second World War, John Slade. From the parish of Cookson with Easington, from the First World War, Percy Chant, George Frederick Crockett, and from the Second World War, Henry Batley, Stanley Colbert, Benjamin Jacobs, Albert Osborne, Kenneth John Skinner, Edwin Stokes. They shall grow not old as we that are left grow old. Age shall not weary them, nor the years condemn. At the going down of the sun and in the morning, we will remember them. Thank <laughs> you.
When you go home, tell them of us and say, for your tomorrow, we gave our today. Let us pray. Ever living God, we remember those whom you have gathered from the storm of war into the peace of your presence. May that same peace calm our fears bring justice to all peoples, and establish harmony among the nations. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. A reading from John. I am the true vine, and my father is the gardener. He cuts off every branch in me that bears no fruit, while every branch that does bear fruit, he prunes, so that it will be even more fruitful. You are already clean because of the world I have spoken to you. Remain in me, and I also will remain in you. No branch can bear fruit by itself, it must remain in the vine. Neither can you bear fruit unless you remain in me. I am the vine, and you are the branches. If you remain in me, and I in you, you will bear much fruit, Apart from me, you can do nothing. If you do not remain in me, you are like a branch that is thrown away and withers. Such branches are picked up, thrown into the fire and burned. If you remain in me and my words remain in you, ask whatever you wish and it will be done to you. This is my Father's glory, that you bear much fruit, showing yourselves to be my disciples. As the Father has loved me, so have I loved you. Now remain in my love. If you keep my commands, you will remain in my love, just as I have kept my Father's commands and remain in his love. I have told you this so that my joy may be in you and that your joy may be complete. My command is this, love each other as I have loved you. Greater love has no one than this, to lay down one's life for one's friends. Hi, thanks for tuning in. My name is Matt Stevens, and I'm recording this from the Church of the Ascension at RAF Benson. We see periodically the familiar slogan that life is not about the destination, but rather the journey and your experience of it. So rather than wishing away this strange new era of QR codes and masks, I wonder if instead we can weave it somehow into our collective narrative of hope. Viktor Frankl says that we can survive any nightmare that we can make meaning of. And while this year has undoubtedly caused for some hurt and worry or pain, there is hope. Hope that humanity can connect in new and exciting ways that relationships can be formed and enhanced virtually, that there is encouragement, that though the patterns of our lives have been shaken, our journeys go on. One of the patterns of life that has been changed this year is remembrance. We won't be physically together at a war memorial, standing shoulder to shoulder observing silence this year. But that doesn't mean we can't stand together metaphorically to reflect on the sacrifices and great love that have gone before us. After World War I, just over a century ago, King George V issued a proclamation that upon the anniversary of the war, all locomotion should cease, that in perfect stillness, the thoughts of all should be concentrated 
on the reverent remembrance of the glorious dead. There was at that time a military chaplain by the name of Reverend Railton. Railton had been a frontline chaplain on the battlefields of France. And he recalled later that he would often, while walking the lines, stumble upon hastily marked graves, sometimes denoted with two simple sticks in the shape of a cross. When the war ended and Railton returned home, He did so to find a nation in mourning, with no outlet for their grief. And he was moved by this, and so the idea was born for the tomb of the unknown soldier. Under Railton's careful eye, a number of deceased servicemen in British uniform were carefully and reverently exhumed from the major battlegrounds of France, including Ypres and the Somme. They were taken to a chapel at St Paul, on November the 7th, 1920. There they were arrayed and all shrouded in an identical Union flag. The officer in charge, Brigadier Wyatt, selected a single soldier from those before him, entirely at random, with no idea if the man he had chosen was a private or a major, British or Commonwealth, a Tommy or a Tariq, the son of an Earl or a labourer. Those unchosen were taken and with great care and dignity reburied, while the unknown soldier selected was sealed into a coffin made from British oak taken from Hampton Court, the king's own sword affixed on top, bearing a brass plaque with the inscription, a British warrior of the Great War for king and country. The body was taken from the chapel at St Paul to Dover, crossing the channel on the destroyer HMS Verdun, and then onwards to London. In London, two years to the day after the war had ended, on the 11th of November, was drawn in procession through London to the new memorial, the Cenotaph at Whitehall, to be met by the King. There followed a two-minute silence, after which the body continued on the journey to Westminster through an honour guard of 100 holders of the Victoria Cross. The final resting place, a grave in the transept of Westminster Abbey, filled with 100 sandbags of soil taken from the various battlegrounds of France and sealed with a solid slab of Belgian black marble. No one was sure how the public would respond. Bear in mind that then, unlike now, an act of remembrance was an entirely new concept. Yet in the first week alone of November 1920, over a million members of the public visited to quietly pay homage and respect to the unknown soldier. Today, A century later, we reflect on the words which are inscribed on the tomb from the Gospel of St John. Greater love hath no man than this, than to lay down one's life for one's friends. Our culture is often uncomfortable with silence. It can be seen as vacant space, waiting to be filled with content. We try and cram every empty moment full. I read a poem this week by Thomas Keating called Out of a Stone. And in it he writes that the silence of the Creator is thunderous, drowning out everything else, hiding in endless creativity. The silence of the creator is thunderous. Silence 
isn't vacant. Silence is where we meet the thunderous divine presence. And while we won't be able to meet and share a physical period of silence at Remembrance this year, I encourage you to take some time for silence wherever you are. If you haven't already, make it part of your daily routine on your journey. From RAF Benson to the benefits and beyond, we wish you every peace and every good. Amen. As our service draws to a close this morning, let us conclude in prayer. Most holy God and Father, hear our prayers now for all who strive towards your peace and all who pursue true justice. By your grace, bring us who remember the lost today to the peace of your eternal presence. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. God grant to the living grace to the departed, rest. To the Church, Queen and Commonwealth, and to all his creatures, unity, peace and concord. And to us and to all his servants, life everlasting. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son and the Holy Spirit be amongst you and remain with you always. Amen.